Hello friends, here we are. The Medium's Harvest by Emmanuel. And this is day three of a 90 day journey. Yes, because there are 90 sh chapters in this beautiful book. And this is the first edition kindly given to us by Karina Alice. Thank you, Karina. And we were granted this beautiful book, first edition, autographed by Chico, right before we came back from Brazil. It's amazing. What a gift to Kardec Radio. Karina, I don't consider this a gift to our person, but to the community because it's a treasure. It is a treasure. And in the, in the introduction, the first and the second chapters, we learn with Emmanuel for those who want to educate their mediumship, that mediumship is not about simply proof of the beyond. Mediumship is not about simple communication to the minds of the spirits. Mediumship is actually about an opportunity to disciplining emotions. Disciplining emotions. Disciplining and edifying. Disciplining in the sense of refining. What do you think of discipline when you hear the word discipline? You think of repression? That's not what it is. When Chico Xavier talked to his spirit mentor Emmanuel and said, I'm willing as a spiritist to help its dissemination, Emmanuel clearly told him, you need this discipline, discipline. What did he mean? Repression? No. He meant, and I'm, we are not daring to explain Emmanuel's deep goals and thoughts, but we can extrapolate based on his teachings, the teachings he brings to us, that he's talking about edification of emotions, about self-management, self-awareness. It's not about not feeling but it's about what to do with those feelings. It's about knowing that we can go to a particular direction and then decide to turn it around and go to a opposite to an opposite direction as long as we know we're in charge of it with our will. As we learned tonight at the Spirit Side of Virginia, with the kind spirit mentor Joseph when he was explaining about the preciousness of our spiritual body. He said when we were given our, um, when we reached the human level, we received a credit card, free will. And we need to learn how to manage it. I know, people like and dislike credit cards. We love for what it's possible to achieve and acquire through its use, but we don't like when they bill us. But free will is just like that. We love freedom. I love to be me. I'm free to be me, but it has a price. The bill is going to arrive. The consequences of being ourselves. And when we talk about mediumship, we're talking about consequences of those choices. That's why in this chapter 3, remember yesterday we talked about our vibrational business card. Today, as we're contemplating our vibratory tone, Emmanuel very kindly, as an educator, brings to us chapter 3, Spiritist Teaching. What does he want to teach us in that regard? When they were on a meeting, in a meeting on January 
1960. They were studying item 3 of the medium's book. And that's our homework, to go there and see what it was. But breaking down, Emmanuel tells us the following. Shall we read it? Let us listen to Emmanuel and see this beautiful teacher of humanity. He is the one of the educators of humanity sent by Jesus. He says, if you have embraced the Spiritist doctrine as guidelines for your own renewal, then you are naturally called to withhold its teachings all around. As a manager, you shall not limit yourself to controlling physical assets, for you will only know you only know how to use them on behalf of everyone. As a legislator, you shall not keep to the galley of privilege, for you will humanize the laws for your people. As a judge, authority shall not endear you to convention, for you yourself will be the safeguard of proper rights. As a doctor, you shall not be confined to a sickly organ, for you will auscultate likewise the suffering soul. As a teacher, your disciple shall not be mere associates in the study of numbers and letters, but true children of the heart. As a business person, you shall not make the commerce of the market. You shall not make of commerce the market of inferior interests, but the school of fraternity and of assistance. As a laborer, you shall not steal time in the exercise of rebelliousness, but will watch over with satisfaction the fulfillment of your own obligations. As a farmer, you shall not be an insatiable leech of the earth, but will reap from it the harvest, nobly assisting it to reinvigorate and flower. Whichever your current profession, you are constantly invited to ennoble it with the stamp of your faith. Mold in human values because every virtuous deed virtuous deed according to the spiritist view of responsibility needs to go beyond the call of duty so that the act of serving can be converted into love wherever we are today we are constantly induced to lecture on understanding and conduct in accordance with our principles. Here, solidarity, there, fidelity to commitments, further, comprehension. Yonder, renunciation. Here, devotion to work, there, patience. Further, unconditional forgiveness. Yonder, the spirit of sacrifice. The Spiritist doctrine, in its essence, is a university of redemption. And each of its devotees or students, by virtue of the need of inner enhancement, is obliged to educate his or her self in order to educate others. 
This is the reason why no matter the sector of your activity, if you espouse its tasks, you will be teaching the pathway of elevation through the exemplification day after day. Breathe in and out because Emmanuel is always ahead. If we try to compile a dissertation on Spiritist teaching, it wouldn't be close. What does he mean by it all? In the first chapters, he was revisiting to us the mediumship, scientific mediumship, is not enough. We need to work upon ourselves. Then he says that our thoughts create our vibrational business card, that we make connections through which we connect to other hearts and minds. And we can't forget that when he talks about that vibrational business card in chapter 2, he's talking about our vibratory tone. And the vibratory tone that accounts for the millennia of our existence, humanly speaking. The baggage we carry with ourselves. That's why you may be in your house and you are in your habitual life, the routine, and then you go visit some other people elsewhere and you're impacted by their vibratory field. And it makes you either feel encouraged to do more good works or paralyzed. Because our energy fields, our vibratory fields, connect. Either repelling one another, making us feel somewhat paralyzed or boosting ourselves, making us feel encouraged to progress. To work on mediumship, we need that type of awareness. We need emotional awareness. We need spiritual awareness. And we can only gain it at the cost of self-observation. But tonight, Emmanuel is asking us another question. When he begins chapter 3, titled Spirit is Teaching, and he says, If you have embraced Spiritism as guidelines for your own renewal, then you're naturally called to withhold its teaching all around. Pause. Forget about the rest of the chapter. Because the rest of the chapter depends on this first statement. It's a condition. If. If. He begins by asking us, in between the lines, the analysis of the discourse, is asking you and I. Have you embraced spiritism? Question number one. If you have embraced it, but there's a condition, as guidelines for your own renewal, have you? Have I? We need to ask ourselves. Some people, they embrace spiritism. Others don't even embrace. They just glance at it. They go to spiritist centers. They read books, but they haven't embraced it. They haven't owned it. It's about ownership. You feel it belongs to you, but condition to belongs to you as guidelines for inner improvement. People who look at other spiritists and say, I don't feel like being a spiritist workers, worker. You know why, Vanessa? 
because I see some spiritist workers and it's discouraging. Look what they do. Look how they behave. Question Emmanuel is asking to this person who is judging others. Have you embraced spiritism for your renewal? If that person says yes, why does it matter what others do? Why the behavior of others will matter to my own, my own decision? I embrace the spiritism as my guideline for inner reform, for inner transformation. If others have embraced for other reasons, for self-promotion, if other spiritists call themselves spiritists and have embraced it to compete with others, to find a pathway of self Promotion, that's their problem, not mine, not yours. It's not my problem. That doesn't discourage me. If, and only if, I have embraced spiritism for my own renewal. So this message is for those who are willing to use their mediumship with Jesus. And this message comes for those who have embraced spiritism for their betterment. Are you surprised, friend? Why am we asking this? Because I know many mediums, spiritists or non-spiritists, they say, my inner transformation is my issue. It doesn't affect my mediumship. Yes, it does. Mediums who have addictions, material addictions, moral addictions, of course it affects our vibratory tone that is going to be the means for spiritual connections. So we need to ask ourselves. And Emmanuel doesn't stop there, you see? He goes on, he goes further. He says, if you have embraced spiritism for self-renewal, then, see? So it's like three parts in one sentence. Then you are naturally called to withhold its teachings in your whole life. It's another question he's asking us. Are you separating these teachings and the natural transformation that it does to your life from the rest of your life? Because there are mediums or non-medium spiritists, if I may say it this way, because we're all mediums, but we're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, non-ostensible mediums, that they go there, they do fantastic works. But when they leave the spiritist center, they drink, they smoke, they gossip. They do clandestine works. And they say, but Vanessa, we're on earth, come on. We need to survive. Spiritism in the spiritist center. According to what Emmanuel is telling us and what the rational thinking tells us, if I embrace spiritism for my inner renewal naturally, my life is changed. You will change your profession, your attitude before life. So he gives examples. He's such a good educator that he gives almost countless examples so we can understand clearly what he means. A good educator repeats as often as needed the lesson 
so students can be reassured of that unforgettable lesson, needed lesson. He says, for example, manager, overall, whatever type of manager, if you embrace these teachings for self-renewal, you're not going to limit yourself to the job duty of a manager. As a spiritist, as a spiritist, we will use what you're doing to the benefit of all. That's what's a spirit, a good spiritist manager. Okay, Sunshine is kindly here saying, then you're called to withhold its teaching in your whole life. He means, thank you for asking, Sunshine. He means that we need to apply this self-renewal in our daily duties. It's not only being a spiritist in the spiritist center. And he gives us examples. If you're a manager, you need to think about managing those physical activities and assets towards the benefit of all. Okay, so translation, right? Uh, okay, the translation here was saying withhold and here in Portuguese I would say probably we can improve this by saying we will apply it, not withhold, but apply. Yeah, okay, let me see. Yeah, no, it's, it's about fixating. It's about highlighting the teachings. I would say better than withholding. Thank you, sunshine. Words really matter. That's why we're doing this study, to polish this translation, which is fantastic. But there are always details we miss. It's actually about applying the highlights of these teachings in our lives. It's not to withhold. Right, Raquel? Raquel was just there with us. Yeah, now that makes sense. Yeah, that's good. That's why we're teamworking here. It's good. We're teamworking. It's about applying. <coughs> Thank you. So, if I am a legislator, authority shall not endear you to convince you, for yourself will be the safeguard of proper rights. So then, we will not only create, you know, make sure laws are being complied, but we will also make sure that I follow through the compliance. Because there are people who enforce the laws, but they feel they are an exception to the law just because they are the ones securing the law. That happens. If you watch the American television shows, LAPD, NYPD, and many others, you see corruption happening exactly in the police or in the forces that are to actually enforce the compliance to the law. Now, the doctor, physicians, you shall not be confined to a sickly organ, but to auscultate the suffering soul. Mamma mia, Emmanuel, we are far from it. Yes, the spiritist doctor, like Dr. President Menezes, Professor Euripides Barsanufo, they were already ahead of the game, teaching us to listen to the suffering soul, not only observing the physical body. When we study our spiritual body, we learn that the connection between the physical and the spiritual body allows for new knowledge and acquisition of experiences but also the drainage of the vibratory imbalances 
that I accumulated and I stored in my spiritual body, the very spirit. So when a spiritist physician is treating a cancer patient, they don't see the case of cancer patient as a person who is doomed. They actually see somebody who was given the opportunity of doing what? Cleansing their vibratory disturbances, expelling it through the body in the form of cancer. Of course, the physician, the spiritist physician is not going to say, let's throw a party to your cancer. But we're going to say, blessed you are that this vibratory dystonia is out of your peri spirit. The day you discarnate, you're going to discarnate much more easily. It's hard for those who are materialistic. But for those who are practicing this different view in life, it becomes consoling. You're relieved, though still working on it. It's not easy, but it's something to work upon. The teacher, now the teacher, if you're a teacher, come on, right, teachers? Your disciples are not mere associates in the study of numbers and letters, but true children of the heart. Professor Euripides Barsanufo. Yes, he taught us the spiritist way of being a teacher. Treating the students as children of the heart. I care about those children. There is a reason why we're there together. And he talks about the business person. Talking about creating that business as a school fraternity and of assistance. And I know people are going to claim, say, but Vanessa, fraternity? The product that I'm selling. I know it's not good enough, so stop selling it. Because you're creating karma for you. Of course you are. Don't sell a car that is in bad shape saying it's in good shape. You're lying. But I need the money. Do something else. But do not do this. It's not kind. It's not fraternal. It's not helpful. I remember when I first came to the United States. In 1998, second time around, moving here, I came across a dealer, a car dealer, and he sold me a car. It was old. A month later, I had to change the transmission of the car. I said, you know, I forgive him, but of course, somewhat I knew that a 10-year-old car couldn't be perfect. I didn't blame him, but at the same time, he said, you know, I wish he wakes up for what he's doing because others may not forgive him. And he may not easily forgive himself either. I also remember at the Spirit Center of Virginia many years ago, somebody coming and saying, Vanessa, I'm feeling somewhat guilty. I have a good job. But now, reading these teachings of Spiritism, I realize I'm working for a company that manufactures guns. I was like, oh, mama mia. Guns? She said, yes. I didn't realize it until tonight that 
I may not be using the guns or manufacturing the guns, but I am in the business of guns. What do I do? And then we said, you already know the answer. Aren't you shocked? So you know the answer. You don't approve of it anymore. So you already know what to do. Because if our conscience does not approve of ourselves, what happens next? We, we clog our vibratory system. Oh, yeah. Andre Louis in the book Evolution into Worlds, chapter 19 of the second part, he says, we create then nodules of vibratory disturbance. Knots. And that predisposes us to illnesses. So the best way is to find a reason, as I mean, we say, to accommodate the new knowledge that boosts our discernment and accommodate it in a whole life. Do not separate work from your faith. As he says here, he says clearly here, he says to us, whichever your current profession, you are constantly invited to ennoble it with the stamp of your faith. We can no longer lead our lives in the same way as other people. Teachers who don't know of spiritism, physicians who don't know of spiritism, judges who don't know of spiritism, managers who don't know of spiritism, business people, are you a realtor agent? Be a good spiritist realtor agent. Do you believe in what you're selling? Do you believe this is helping people? Would you like to receive what you're giving as an agent? If you say yes, congratulations, keep going. If you say no, change it as soon as possible. And that's exactly what he's saying. Wherever we are today, we need to go beyond the call of duty so that the act of serving can be converted into love. Love is in the air. Everywhere I look around, that should be the feeling. People may not understand. They may think you smile too much. That everything is too easy for you because they didn't know your struggle. They think, they may think, you're a little crazy. But you know, what did they think of Jesus? Worse. And he said, if they think this of me, just wait and see, they're going to think worse of you. Because I am the living branch, and you're the dry ones. Because we're dry because our previous life's experiences. Our previous life's experiences limited us. Now we need to water our plants with the gospel, the good news every day. I love and approve myself in ways that are pleasing to God. Because we, we've come from many lives when we disapproved of ourselves and now guilt mounts and dries our branches but we need to tell ourselves God believes in me so do I God believes in me so do I if others don't God believes in them too if somebody tells us I don't think you can do it God thinks I can do it, and I think you can do it too. 
It doesn't matter. God is the all-powerful. No one else. It doesn't matter what people do. That's why Emmanuel says, when we embrace these teachings, we change our lives, we bring it everywhere. Thus, we'll be faithful to our commitments. Consequences, he's saying now. As he wraps up, there's no excuse any longer. No, I'm going to close my center because people are not coming. What about the discarnates? I am no longer going to do this because others are doing that. Go elsewhere and keep doing be faithful to your commitment. I will understand people and I will renounce. What will I renounce when I embrace this? That people love me. If they don't, it's on me to love them. If they don't, it's okay. People don't even love God. Do you think they're going to love us? And God gives us everything. I look at myself and I say, it's okay. I know it's not about me. It's about them. If you're going to meet family tomorrow or today, depending on where you are, Thanksgiving Day, in many parts of the world, especially the United States, we'll say, here you may be reunited with family and friends. And we know it's not simple. But never feel that you're not loved because they don't love themselves yet. Naturally, they're not going to love. We forgive, we forget. That's why he says, we work devotedly, we're patient, we exercise unconditional forgiveness. You know when you're hurt? Self-defense tells me, I'll never do this again. I'll never talk to that person again. Never say never. Because we're supposed to try again. We're supposed to forgive. That's when we embrace these teachings. To the spirit of sacrifice. Mediumship exercise without renunciation and Sacrifice is not mediumship with Jesus. It's mediumship with the world. But mediumship with Jesus comes with this flavor. Imagine a cookie, a healthy one, okay? Mediumship. The flavors. Loyalty. Understanding. Renunciation of the ego. Patience. Unconditional forgiveness. These are the cookie decoration. And sacrifice. You want to eat it? Do you want to eat this cookie? Because if you do, I tell you, it looks weird, but it tastes good. In immortality. At first, it seems bitter. You keep chewing upon it, it becomes sweet and strengthens your soul. That's mediumship with spiritism. So today, Emmanuel is telling us the spiritist doctrine is then, in its essence, the university of our redemption. It's when we redeem ourselves. No coupons. I know Black Friday is coming. People are talking about redeeming coupons. But spiritually speaking, spiritism comes to redeem ourselves from previous life choices. And finally, in the last hour of our planet, coming and saying, at 11 p.m., I got it. I'm committed. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep working on myself, blessing everything, renewing my commitment, because at the end of the day, it's between God and us. 
and never between us and others. What people do, they are going to give account to God. Same for us. This is the reason why Emmanuel says, no matter the sector of your activity, if you espouse its tasks, you'll be teaching the pathway of elevation through its exemplification day after day. And we have to say nowadays for parents, the same rule applies. A spiritist parent is the one that cares for the immortal soul, not for the growing body of the child. So when they turn 18, they emancipate, but we're still entitled to guiding, supporting, and helping them in whatever needed way. This is it, friends. I'm going to say hi to the community that has been here joining forces. Beautiful sis, how are you? Teresa Catapano, how are you? Renata. Renata Casadei, you've read the book and now you're studying again. And you can tell the difference, right? You will figure it out. And we have here Rihanna, and we have Sunshine with us, Pérola Bronze, how are you? Teresa Castro, big hug to you, my friend. Lisa Telles, Erica, my cousin of the heart. Marisa, how are you, Marisa de Melo? Andrea Torres, Aline da Silva, big hug to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Livia Moraes, you're so right, Livia. We'll never change others, but changing ourselves is hard work, but it pays off. Sunshine and Raquel, beautiful Raquel. And, you know, I want to share with you, Kara Correa is here with us as well. Yes, and we have many friends coming about as this is on demand. Should you have questions, write to us. You know, we're never too busy because this is what we're doing. We're studying together. Should you have a question, write to us. Call us because your question may be a new learning experience for us as well. You may be helping us, okay? Tomorrow when we come back, in the Medium's Harvest with Emmanuel. We're going to come back for Chapter 4. It's going to be Thanksgiving. And what a better day to... Dun, 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 dun. In view of mediumship. Ta -da! And Emmanuel says... Are you prepared? It's a teaser. Huh? It's a beautiful chapter. And he says... Do not keep illusions in face of mediumistic phenomena. She, what does he mean? I don't know. Come back and we'll know more. Friends, oh, shh, big hug. Gratitude to God for we're here together. The resources and the experience in both realms to learn together, evolve, and only God knows what, what lies ahead of us, but we know only good things. Big hug. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>